Hey guys, my name is Matimio, and welcome to another episode of Sunday Mailbox. This is a video series where you, the viewer, can submit your gaming or battlefield related questions, and then I will give my humble opinion on them. To get the format out of the way real quick, if you would like to submit your own question that could be featured in an upcoming episode, you can do so by leaving a comment down below or by sending me a Facebook and Twitter message. The first question for today comes from William, and it is, now that we know that we won't be able to look down iron sights in Battlefront, are you worried that the game won't require skill and will be be too casual. Well, it might be more casual than some people are expecting. DICE is trying to accommodate a huge player base, not only people that are a fan of the Star Wars universe, but also the Battlefront series and Battlefielders, or really just anyone who's excited about a huge new AAA first person shooter. And so you are right, they might go down the casual route, but I don't think them saying that you won't be able to aim down your iron sights means that it's only going to be hip fire weapons. I think what they meant by this quote is that there literally won't be iron sights, but there's gonna be scopes. I recently went back and played uh, Battlefront 2 and you could definitely aim down sight but it was with uh, like a sniper rifle or you had some sort of scope and so I would be very surprised if that wasn't in the game. Uh, not only that but it doesn't mean that it would necessarily be casual if everything was completely hip fire. Look at Counter-Strike. That is one of the least casual first person shooters out there and it has a huge skill gap. You jump into it originally and you think everything is completely random, but once you learn the bullet spread, once you learn how these weapons perform, you realize that that bullet spread is predictable and you're able to compensate for that recoil to get headshots on your enemy and, you know, improve your gameplay. And so I'm not saying that the new Battlefront is going to have that type of recoil pattern. I don't think that they're going to emulate uh, Counter-Strike. They might do that, but just because you're not able to aim down iron sights doesn't necessarily mean that it's going to be com completely casual. The other argument against this is that I would be very surprised if DICE made first person mode completely obsolete in Star Wars Battlefront. The main draw for first person, at least in my eyes, is that you can have that pinpoint like accuracy. If, there, if that wasn't in the game and you weren't able to at least aim down some sort of scope, then why would you want to be in first person mode when third person allows you to see more in front of you? Like if you're in third person, you can literally peek around a corner without the enemy knowing that you're peeking around the corner. Like it gives you a huge advantage on the battlefield and if there's no aim down sight whatsoever, then why would anyone want to be in first person? And so it's for these very reasons that while yes, we won't be able to literally look down our iron sights in Star Wars Battlefront, that's not going to be an option, but I don't necessarily think that means that there isn't going to be any skill whatsoever and it's going to be completely casual. DICE likes to have depth to their game. They want people to continue to play their game for months on end, and if there isn't any skill and it's just completely shallow, that's going to take away from that in-depth gameplay. Not only that, but I think there's also going to be some scopes in the game. If the past Battlefront games are any indication, there's going to be sniper rifles. There's going to be some way of aiming down sight, either through your visor or through a weapon scope. And so, yeah, no iron sights, but I don't think this necessarily means that it's going to be far different than any other first-person shooter out there. The next question comes from Tim, and it is, What do you think about snipers being able to shoot the weak points in tanks and taking out the driver? Uh, well, admittedly, I wasn't too well versed on this topic. I went to the internet to not only not sound like an idiot, but I wanted to find out for myself, was it even possible to use a 50 caliber bolt action rifle and get through the, the armor on a modern military tank? I do know that there have been some stories during the World Wars where a sniper has successfully taken down one of these vehicles. They've been able to shoot at one of the weak spots in one of these tanks. Uh, their armor was nowhere near as thick as it is today. And if they were lucky enough, they could take out someone on the inside. Like that apparently was very possible. Today though, at least from my brief research, and it was brief and so I might be wrong, but from the couple of articles that I did read, it seems like even a 50 caliber bolt action rifle does not have the piercing potential to get through one of these modern military tanks. It, the armor is just way too thick. And so it's for this very reason that while the concept is very interesting, it is a very intriguing idea on giving some more power to the recon class to dispose of some of these vehicles, I'd like the game to be at least somewhat authentic. I know we're playing a video game and not everything needs to be hyper realistic, but it's for this very reason why I don't think it would necessarily be a good idea in, in the Battlefield franchise. Maybe they could do something with the LAVs and the Jeeps. I, I don't know if they're able to pierce through an LAV, but it's a light armored vehicle. It's nowhere near as thick as a tank. And so maybe that would be one way that they could have the recon more of a presence on the battlefield. 
But even then, I don't know if I would want snipers to have that type of capability and to be able to basically just one-shot someone on the inside or do damage to someone on the inside. It would need to be very skill-based. Like, they would need to be at the right angle. They would be able to, they would need to nail that perfect shot. And even then, I don't know if they should instantly take out the player. Like, that, that seems really good. Really, really good. And so I'd like to get your guys' take on this. Do you like the idea of having the bolt-action rifles potentially maybe piercing through the light armored vehicles like the LAV, maybe something like the Jeeps to take out those players, or do you think it's a completely terrible idea and you think it should stay as it is? Even if it was added to the game, it's not going to happen to Battlefield 4. Like, this would be something that would take a lot of development time, I'm, I'm assuming. It would probably have to be in the next Battlefield game, but let me know if you do think that this is a solid recommendation. The next question is, do you think that DICE should import the Battlefield Hardline's ballistic shield mechanics into Battlefield 4? It would make it much more useful and much more gratifying to use. I think that this is a marvelous idea. Even if it was just on your back, that gives you a huge advantage. I mean, I mean, you guys all know, I'm sure you've experienced this in Battle of the Hardline. You go against a support player, he's running away from you, and all you can do is shoot at his feet, and it easily saves his life. Like, having that thing on your back like a turtle is a massive advantage. The thing about it though is I don't know if that's possible in Battlefield 4. I know that DICE has already talked about that there isn't enough memory to have a shield and a pistol. This is one of the limitations of the old gen consoles. They wanted you to be able to use a shield and a pistol when they were first designing it, but because of the memory restrictions, that wasn't possible and so now what we have right now. And so as long as that's not a restriction, then yeah, I, th I think that's great. Have it on your back and blocking bullets would be, would be awesome. Uh, not only that, but the shield itself just seems better. I don't know if it's covering more of your body in front. I mean, I haven't done a side-by-side -side comparison, but it just seems to give you way more protection when you're using it as you're supposed to be. I don't know if this is because there's less explosives in Battle of the Hardline. Like in Battle of the Four, if anything sneezes at that shield, doesn't matter what it is, it could even be a flash grenade, it will break that, that frontal glass, that, protect, that protective glass, and then you're an easy target for the enemy to take down. I don't know if, if that's the reason why, but it just seems like it's, it's a hardier, a hardier gadget. And so, yeah, I think this is a great idea. The shield in 4 is flat out abysmal, and any improvement is a good one in my eyes. The next question comes from Antonio, and it is, what do you think about a realistic mode where you can one-hit anyone, and also there will be no HUD for the new upcoming night maps? Well, a lot of you guys probably know that I love that realistic gameplay. I love Insurgency, Red Orchestra 2 is flat out fantastic. I love that type of combat, but you have to remember that those games are designed around that realistic combat and Battlefield 4 isn't whatsoever. If all of a sudden you made every single weapon one shot an enemy, you're gonna have guns that are gonna be completely obsolete. Every slow rate of fire weapon is going to be terrible. DMRs, sure, they're, they're all right now, no one's gonna use them. Bolt action rifles, forget about it because every single gun is gonna be able to one shot an enemy and so the high rate of fire assault rifles, high rate of fire light machine guns, or actually PDWs, would all of a sudden be completely dominant on the battlefield field. And so you really do have to design your game mode and this hyper realism around this type of damage model. Not every gun on the battlefield should be able to one shot someone. Soldiers are wearing body armor. Even in real life, if you get hit by a bullet, you're not going to die instantly. Sure, a headshot should do some significant amount of damage. Sure, a headshot might kill you outright. But even in Insurgency and in Red Orchestra 2, not everyone is dying instantly if you hit certain parts of their bodies or with certain weapons. And so would I be opposed if they did decide to add in a hyper-realistic game mode? Absolutely not. I love it, but I don't know if they really should be spending the development time and the effort to do that in Battlefield 4. I can only assume there's only a handful of people continuing to work on the CTE and, and, and developing the game. They're doing an amazing job, like do not get me wrong. DICE LA, I, I love them. I have to give a huge tip of my hat to them because they have completely turned around Battlefield 4. They saved it, like they are doing a phenomenal job, but I would rather them continue to update and support the game for what it's good at, which is that normal game mode, which we've all grown to love, and not try to go in and completely change the game with a new 
new game mode. Like, they would literally have to completely redesign every single weapon and their damage model to make that work effectively and to have it to be at least somewhat enjoyable. And so while clearly I love the idea of hyper-realism, I love that type of gameplay, I just don't think that is something that DICE LA should be working on for Battlefield 4. Uh, but yeah, guys, that is about it for today's Sunday Mailbox. I hope you enjoyed. As always, if you would like to submit your own question that could be featured in an upcoming episode, you can do so by leaving a comment down below or by sending me a Facebook and Twitter message. But until tomorrow, guys, have a good one and take it easy. Thank you